Welcome to episode 323 of the Selling Your Screenplay podcast. I'm S.G. Scott Myers, screenwriter and blogger over at SellingYourScreenplay.com. Today I'm interviewing John Adler. He is a screenwriter who turned a life experience into a screenplay, which turned into the film Dead Sound. I'll be talking to him um, this week about his career, how he got into the business, and how he was able to turn, again, this really horrific life experience into a produced feature film. So stay tuned for that interview. If you find this episode valuable, please help me out by giving me a review in iTunes or leaving a comment on YouTube or retweeting the podcast on Twitter or liking or sharing it on Facebook. These social media shares really do help spread word about the podcast, so they're very much appreciated. Any websites or links that I mention in the podcast can be found on my blog in the show notes. I also publish a transcript with every episode in case you'd rather read the show or look at something later on. You can find all the podcast show notes at www.sellingyourscreenplay.com slash podcast and then just look for episode number 323. If you want my free guide, How to Sell a Screenplay in Five Weeks, you can pick that up by going to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash guide. It's completely free. You just put in your email address and I'll send you a new lesson once per week for five weeks along with a bunch of bonus lessons. I'll teach the whole process of how to sell your screenplay in that guide. I'll teach you how to write a professional log on and query letter and how to find agents, managers, and producers who are looking for material. Really is everything you need to know to sell your screenplay. Just go to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash guide guide. So a quick few words about what I'm working on. So again, the main thing I'm working on now is my feature film, The Ride Chair Killer, um, which we shot in December. We did finally settle on an editor this week, so I'm actually going to bring him the hard drive right after I finish recording this podcast. He seems like a real good fit for this project, so I'm excited to get this going. So hopefully in four to six weeks, we'll have a rough cut of the film and really start to know where we stand with this thing. As I mentioned last week, I'm also trying to get my next project off the ground. So far, um, no hits or, or, or any real news to um, report since last week, but um, I'm still you know, about 60% funded. I have started to dig deeper and deeper into my Rolodex, um, so hopefully something will turn up, but it's definitely taking up some time. You're just emailing people, um, talking to some people on the, on the phone, pitching them the project. Um, I have one person that wants to see like a pitch deck. I've got to decide if it's worth the, um, the effort to go ahead and make that. Um, that's a, you know, a considerable amount of time creating a professional pitch deck. Um, so anyway, still working on that. Again, it's taken up quite a bit of time, um, but hopefully that will um, reap some rewards here in the near future. The other thing I'm working on is a low-budget screenplay contest, which I'll be running through selling your screenplay. I'm still a, week, still a few weeks away from launching it, but I'm really hoping that this can be a good avenue for producers to discover low-budget scripts. I've been reaching out to all my producer contacts, and so far lots of them um, want to come on and be judges. I probably have 30, you know, reputable producers that want to come on and, um, and just be a judge in the contest. Um, and you know, a lot of them specialize in different, um, types of genres, um, you know, action thrillers, whatever. Um, so we should have a good, um, a good, uh, really a good, a good representation of, of producers again, that are looking for material really across the board in different genres. Um, so I take, took that to be a real good sign. I'm going to tie, um, this contest to the annual budget list, which I put out towards the end of the year. I always get some interest in this budget list. I know at least a few of the scripts have been optioned through the budget list. So I know that there's demand. Like I know that there's producers looking for good low budget scripts. Um, so hopefully this can be again, another way that they can dis they can discover them. Um, so we'll, we'll start taking submissions probably in a couple of weeks and then we'll announce um, the winner probably in October, November. Um, and then we will of course highlight them in the budget list. There's gonna be a bunch of other prizes. Um, you know, we'll have a cash prize for the winner, um, you know, a whole bunch of SYS select services. And I'm talking now to some potential sponsors as well. So I might even be able to get some additional prizes, just depending on what other companies might want to be a sponsor. Um, so I'm really just trying to do what I really tried to do was take a step back. I talked to some producers, talked to some other screenwriters, um, you know, and really try and design a system that really will find the best low budget scripts. Um, so what I'm doing is, is going to, what it was, so what I'm going to do with this content contest is the first round each script will be read by three readers and those are readers that I'm going to pay a little bit of money to so that I at least know it's not going to just be a producer who maybe gets tired or maybe doesn't necessarily have the time to read it um, I'll have three reads on every single script and then from there I'll start to be able to vet them start to be able to figure out which are um, the ones with the highest grades each reader will grade each script so then I'll be able to kind of look at the grades go back maybe read some of those scripts that get higher grades and then start to um, 
start to push those out to the producers. Again, there'll be some, you know, genre matching, I would say, um, with the readers, but but certainly with the producers as well. Um, as I said, a lot of the, the um, producers have, have specified what types of scripts, whether it be comedy, comedy drama, thriller, action, whatever. Um, so then after this first round, we'll get three reads, and then again, we'll start to push them out to the producers. Um, we'll start to get their feedback. The producers will grade them as well. And then from there, we'll whittle them down to, you know, a quarterfinals, semifinals, finals, and then, of course, one winner. The main um, sort of carrot that I'm dangling to the producers is that they'll be um, only reading vetted scripts and um, and then also they'll be one of the first people, if not the first person reading the script. Once it's vetted, they'll be one of the first people reading it. So they'll have sort of first crack. If they really like it, they'll have first crack to option. It won't be something that's being read, you know, t by tons and tons of people at the same time. So, um, so that's kind of the carrot that I'm dangling for them. And again, this seems like to be working because... Um, uh, I have I have tons and tons of producers, as I said. I think I'm up to about 30 now um, that have expressed interest in in being a judge for this. So um, so I think we're going to do, as I said, I think it's going to work well, and I think um, hopefully we will be able to. Um, find some scripts for producers and then hopefully those producers will actually be able to go out and get those movies produced so stay tuned for this um, and this is kind of you know a pitch it turns into what I'm working on but this has sort of been taking up a lot of my time recently so stay tuned for um, more info about the um, the low budget screenplay contest again I'll probably be launching it in about two weeks so those are the main things that I'm working on this week now let's get into the main segment today I'm interviewing writer John Adler here is the interview Welcome, John, to the Selling Your Screenplay podcast. I really appreciate you coming on the show with me today. Oh, wow. Thanks for having me, Ashley. So let's talk about your film um, that you wrote and produced, Dead Sound. And maybe we can take a little step back and you can kind of just give us a little bit of a background. Um, you're not sort of the typical filmmaker that comes on this podcast. Um, you had a horrific life story that you then turned into a screenplay and a movie. Um, so maybe we can sort of take you back to your your pre and post college days. Um, tell us a little bit about that story and then tell us sort of how you got into filmmaking. So the real true story is uh, some friends and I were going to Block Island for the weekend. It's, it's an island in Rhode Island uh, where we shot the movie. And we drove from Greenwich, Connecticut to New London, Connecticut, where you catch the ferry over to Block Island. We missed the last ferry on a Friday night. We really had to get to this big party. So we went out on the docks and we found two fishermen, gave them a little bit of money, and they said they'd take us over to Block Island that night. We were like, great, this is awesome. We're on their boat, having a good time. And halfway across, in the middle of the Long Island Sound at night, they pulled a shotgun on us and held us hostage on their boat. They locked two girls down in the bathroom below deck and made my buddy drive the boat with a shotgun to his head. Uh, it was, Yeah, it was definitely the scariest thing any of us have ever experienced. Uh, fortunately, we made it to Block Island um, and physically unharmed. Uh, we got off the boat. Of course, we went to the party that night. Um, and then we told the police <laughs> about it. Yeah, we had to go to the party. That was the most important thing. Um, and, uh, and you know, so it left us all with a traumatic experience. Um, and that was back in 1993. And then... Um, I mean, just, to, just, just to take... Just at a cure... And just, I, I, I hate to keep interrupting, just out of curiosity, though, what was these guys' plan? I mean, they knew that you were going to get off the boat and call the police. I mean, what were they really thinking? Well, I think they were just messing with us. And my instincts tell me that, you know, New London uh, is probably one of those places, at least, you know, back then, uh, where I guarantee you the captain of the boat, the guy that took us hostage, was probably somehow very well connected to like the chief of police of new London. I mean, I think he just knew he could get away with it. A lot of, a lot of kids, um, go through new London, uh, to go to take a ferry to Fisher's Island or block Island. And you kind of get, you know, you know, uh, preppy kids coming through there that kind of clash with the typical, um, you know, the locals that live there and everything. Uh, so I think that this is probably not the first time or probably not the last time that something like that happened. Um, 
but I do think it's the first time that a movie is coming out uh, mm -hmm. uh, where, where that <laughs> happened. Um, so... Okay, so that's the sort of the laying the groundwork for this project. So then maybe take us through sort of what is your background in film and screenwriting specifically and producing? Right, so uh, I, I actually played Division One lacrosse in college for two years and got injured. And I had known I wanted to get into the film business. I've always loved films my whole life. Um, uh, when I was in high school, I, I uh, had the experience of visiting a friend uh, on his movie set at Universal Studios in Hollywood, who's, uh, you know, rel uh, one of the biggest uh, directors and producers in the industry. I just fell in love with it right then and there. You know, you fast forward a couple of years later when I, there was no future in lacrosse and it was, it was time for me to do uh, my, my interest in the film industry. I went to a great little film school at the University of Colorado at Boulder. Um, we had, you know, I, there I learned how to, you know, write, direct, and produce uh, short films. Um, some notable graduates were uh, the two, the two South Park guys. Hmm. Years before I got there, we had a great in Stan Brackage, who was one of the big uh, avant-garde and documentary filmmakers. Um, so I got a really kind of unique education at that school, um, and then I went on to. Uh, to, to spend some time at uh, USC graduate school for film as well, but I ultimately left to uh, make a movie. And I've been working in the business for you know for quite some time. Um, I worked at a production and post production company 15 years, uh, writing and producing uh, for them. And in about 2008, I was talking to a friend of mine who had owned a production company and I was pitching him a bunch of ideas and I told him about this Block Island story and he just said, that's it. That's the one that you have to write. You have to make that movie. Um, so I started writing the script with an old friend of mine, Ted Wyman, who's credited as a writer on the, on the film. And uh, and it was a lot of fun collaborating with him, but he's a, he's a professor, he's a teacher, and he had to go back to work. So I ended up spending the next few years working on it um you know and and it's interesting about writing for me because i never again i was a you know i was an athlete i was always used to being part of a team and and being around people uh was something different for me and um when i was in film school uh i remember we had this professor who was kind of like a mad genius uh professor and he used to tear up people's scripts in class rage he would turn you know delicious shades of red and just shred a script um, and I remember I had written something for him that was pretty personal. It was just a short, and I reluctantly handed it in and I was so nervous that he was going to rip it up. Um, but he ended up, uh, he ended up making my script the topic of, of the class that day. Um, so I just kind of thought to myself, well, he, he didn't, he didn't shred the script. So, so maybe I can write. Um, and then later on when the time came to, to write this, this movie, um, I did, and I wrote it. Uh, I knew I was going to raise the money myself and produce the film, and I wrote it uh, knowing it was going to be a low budget, so I tried to keep um, it, it down to mainly one location, which is on the boat. Um, and it was just a, it was just a great experience. Um, and, and that basically, you know, kind of gets you up to the point of, of production. I don't know if you want me to talk about that at all. Um, I've written a couple of other thrillers that I plan to produce. I'm talking to the studio right now. Um, so it's very, it's very exciting. And I, and I love, I love writing. Um, uh, it's, it's an amazing experience to try and come up with something uh, really out of thin air in your own head and the process of, you know, going through, you know, is it good? Is it not good? Um, you know, you some some points you have a gut feeling that you know people are going to like a certain scene, and other points you have to get someone to read it. Um, I have a good friend who uh, was uh, one of the head writers for Johnny Carson, and then he was one of the senior writers for David Letterman. Uh, he, he wrote uh, the original Bad Boys movie, and, and he's a really good friend. He reads all my stuff, and you know, he'll 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 tell me right right off the bat if he thinks I should just, you know, throw the script away and move on or, or if he likes it. And he gave me a lot of great notes uh, for, for 
the Dead Sound screenplay, as did I got a lot of great notes from my friend in the industry who who uh, who's the director whose whose film set I visited um, all those years ago. He's uh, he's a good friend and he gives me a lot of uh, great advice. I mean that's the other thing is having good advisors um, help mm-hmm. you along the way is is huge. Yeah. So let's dig into Dead Sound specifically and, and talk about the writing of that. So it sounds like you started out doing this collaboration with this um, screenwriting professor. What did that actually look like? Um, were you guys sitting in the same room? Were you talking on the phone or Skype and then dividing up scenes? How did that collaboration actually go while you guys were working yeah. together? Actually, um, you know, he, he wasn't a screen. This was his first screen screenplay as well. I wrote an outline. Um, and worked on the first the first draft, um, and we were not together. He he wrote and I wrote, and then we sent each other our stuff, and then we did another draft, and and um, and then he had to uh, he had to get back to you know what he what he did for a living, um, mm-hmm. and you know for me I I you know I I took a year or two off from working on it and worked on other stuff. And then I revisited it again, and then I took another year or two off from it and just kind of stuck with it. And then one summer, my mother um, really kind of cracked the whip, and she she said, uh, I'm tired of hearing about, you know, this movie. And if you don't finish, she basically told me I had to finish the script uh, that summer. And, you know, my mom, I don't, I don't like to mess with my mom, so... So I got it done. I cranked it out in about two months. Um, and and that two months uh, was an incredible process because at that point, I think it was important that it, it, it took a few years, uh, you know, to, to, to get there because I had a lot more life experience um, at that point and I could, and I was able mm-hmm. to incorporate that into the script, which is what I think, really kind of took it to the place where it was ready to be shot. Yeah. So I'm curious with something like this, that is a very personal story. It's based on, you know, actual things that happen. Um, I'm curious how you approached um, being faithful to the source material um, as opposed to finding those moments where you kind of had to dramatize stuff. And how does that sort of play in with the fact that you, this is a thriller, um, the screenplay structure, you know, in real life, things don't always fall into the neat three act structure, um, genre requirements. You mentioned that this is a thriller. How did you kind of approach those things again, coming at it from something that was personal and real? Well, that's a, that's a great, that's a great question. Actually, it was it was pretty easy because I had the real life events to draw from, and and you know I told the real life story you know hundreds and hundreds of times, and every time I tell it to someone, I, I love the expression on their face; their jaw just drops, and the hair on the back of my neck stands up every time you know I, mm-hmm. I tell it, and and that was really all I needed to write this script was I wanted to translate that fear that my friends and I have in the boat onto the script and, and ultimately have it come across in a movie. And, and I think we did a really great job with that. Our director, Tony Glazer, did a great job. Our cast and crew, everyone did a great job. Um, now, it, it does, this movie, I think, does fall into the classic three-act structure. I basically had the first act done because it was, it, I just had to put down what I, actually happen that's all in the movie mm-hmm. um but then the rest of the movie basically becomes sort of my version of what could have happened on that boat if uh we weren't so lucky mm-hmm. and it just you know it was a fun script to write because the majority of it takes place on the boat and there's only so much you can do uh on a boat in the middle of the long island sound at night um there's only so many things you can so, you know, the action that takes place. Uh, um, and so I, I wrote it and, and we got very lucky. The first boat that we scouted was perfect uh, for the movie. I mean, it had all the, it had an escape hatch that was written into the script. Um, it had a second deck in the wheelhouse. Um, so, uh, you know, write, writing the script um, was, was actually once, once I got to that last few months, it, it was very easy mm-hmm. uh, to do. 
and I had some I had some great inspirations for it. Uh, certain movies like uh, Jaws and Dead Calm, uh, the original Funny Games, believe it or not, it was uh, inspiration and of course Deliverance as well. Um, yeah, so I hope that answers your question. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now you're done with the script. Um, what are your next steps um, to try and actually raise the money? Um, did you have some contacts that you could send it out for? Did you um, just start beating the pavement? Maybe talk about a little of that journey of actually raising the money and getting this thing into production. Sure. Producing the film was really the most fun part for me. Um, you know, raising the money, I raised it all through friends and family. I uh, had some help from our, the film's executive producers, Ken and Janet Schur. Um, and once I had the money uh, in place, um, it was really all about getting the right team together. And we had a couple false starts. We were going to try and shoot it in New Orleans. We were going to try and shoot it uh, elsewhere for tax reasons. Um, but then I, through a friend of mine, I met uh, Summer Crockett Moore, who was... Uh, the film's line producer, and she was one of the co-producers on the film as well. And in talking to her, she told me about her husband, Tony Glazer, who had uh, directed a feature called, I believe it was called Junction. And I saw that film, and I said, this, this, this is the guy that could, that could do a great job for Dead Sound. Um, so right off the bat, I had my line producer and my director, um, and then things just took off from there. Uh, the last place on earth I thought we were going to be able to shoot this movie was where it actually happened on Block Island or on the way to Block Island. And we actually got to shoot the movie on Block Island. Um, and things just started to really fall into place. It was just one of those experiences that, that you, you hope and pray you have on an independent low budget movie. I have a good friend who lives on Block Island and he, his name's Mike Kiley. He became our location manager. Um, and, I mean, he's basically like Block Island royalty. So we nicknamed him the Location Prince. And he opened up all the doors for us on Block Island. I mean, everybody there was so uh, helpful to us and, and were incredible hosts while we were there for a month. Uh, and, and things just went incredibly well. Uh, we had great weather, which is important when you're shooting on a boat. Um, but yeah, so producing the movie and, and, and working with a whole team of, uh, you know, our cast and crew, uh, and seeing everything come together, that was, was uh, you know, an amazing experience. Yeah. Um, and I really, you know, gained a lot of confidence as a producer as well. So. Sure. So I'm curious, just taking a step back, what was your pitch to your friends and family as you're trying to raise money? Um, what did you, what materials did you create? Did you create the pitch deck, you know, the slideshow or whatever? Um, what materials did you create and do you think they helped? And what was just sort of your general pitch to these friends and family? Uh, we had a pitch deck. We had a lookbook with some pictures and stuff, but it was, it was, easy for me. I, uh, I, I sat in front of my investors and I told them the story of what happened to us on the boat. And uh, they smiled. Well, at first they were the ones that hadn't heard it before were kind of shocked. And then they smiled and said they would love to invest in the film. Hmm. And how did you get these people in a room? Did you email them? Were they friends of your mother so you could get your mom to maybe do some of that legwork? I'm just curious how you were able to set up some of these pitch meetings. What did that look like? Well, uh, again, they were friends and family, so I was able to pretty much just call them up and say, hey, can I come over and, I and uh, have a cup of coffee with you and tell you about a film I'm, I'm making, um, you know, and, and – uh, Ken and Janet sure helped with some of those phone calls as well. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, that part, that all these, all of these people, you know, knew what I've been doing, trying to break into the movie industry for years. Um, and it was just my time. Mm -hmm. When the time came, I went to them. I never had gone to them before. And it was just kind of like they were ready to, help they believed in me um and i'm forever grateful to all of them because without my investors this film never would have gotten made yeah yeah for sure so um let's just um what's next for you um what are you working on next 
uh, about six months ago, I started a producing partnership and a new production company uh, with a New York Times best-selling author. Um, and I can't really go into too much detail about it yet because uh, within a month of starting our company, our agent out in L.A., uh, we got us a deal. We negotiated a deal with a studio uh, for my partner's series of uh, best-selling novels. Uh, we've got a star attached, um, and the deal is done. We're executive producers on it. Our production company is uh, one of the production companies on the film. Um, and I just can't, I, unfortunately, I can't talk about yeah, it because yeah, no the deal worries. hasn't been announced yet. Yeah, sure. um, but uh, we're very excited. And, and, you know, my partner's got another series of bestsellers that our agent is about to start uh, taking around. Uh, like I said, I've written a couple more scripts that uh, uh, the studio is interested in. Um, so, you know, it's really exciting mm -hmm. uh, because this little movie we did, Dead Sound, which turned out to be beyond my wildest dreams. I mean, it was so close to my original vision. Uh, it's already led to, you know, now I can kind of, uh, you know, making an independent film is a difficult process. I know I, I, I seemed like I maybe made it sound uh -huh. like it was relatively easy, but it, it wasn't. Yeah. It's very rewarding. Uh, but now I'm able to move into Hollywood movies, um, which is, you know, uh, which is what I've always wanted to do. Yeah, yeah, sure. What have you seen recently that you thought was really great? Again, just keeping in mind, this is a screenwriting podcast. Is there anything that um, maybe was sort of a little below the radar? Netflix, Hulu, at the theater, anything you've seen recently that you would recommend to the audience? Um. Oh my gosh, I, I really have to, <laughs> have to think about that. <laughs> no worries. How can people see um, Dead Sound? Do you know what the release schedule is going to be like for it? Tomorrow, the movie is being released on, on pretty much all the digital platforms and on DVD, okay. uh, iTunes, Amazon Prime. Um, so yeah, so we'll... We're very, we're very excited about that. Yeah, perfect. What's the best way for people to keep up with what you're doing? Twitter, Facebook, a blog, anything you're comfortable sharing, I will round up for the show notes. Um, at the moment, uh, you know, I, I, I post, you know, the progress on Facebook and on Instagram. Uh, I don't have a Twitter account. I don't know if I'll ever want a Twitter account. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah. you know, you can also check out the Dead Sound movie.com website uh, uh, but um, I think when when, uh, when when our new production company um, gets underway that's going to be the best uh, the best place to follow along with what I'm doing um, and I, I can tell you the name of our production company it's called El Dorado Entertainment perfect uh, and and uh, yeah Perfect, perfect. Well, John, I really appreciate you coming on and talking with me today. Um, sounds like a great film. I wish you the luck, best of luck with it. And, um, you know, when you get your next project um, finished, I hope you come back and talk about that one as well. Absolutely, Ashley. I really appreciate the opportunity. I hope uh, I said at least a few things that might might be helpful. Yep. But I, I can leave you with this. Um, sticking with it throughout all the ups and downs is, is the most rewarding experience any filmmaker could ever have. Mm -hmm. You gotta get that first film made. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. So, well, John, good luck, and um, we'll talk to you later. All right, thanks a lot, Ashley. Perfect, thank you, bye. A quick plug for the SYS Screenwriting Analysis Service. It's a really economical way to get a high quality professional evaluation on your screenplay. When you buy our three pack, you get evaluations at just $67 per script for feature films and just $55 for teleplays. All the readers have professional experience reading for studios, production companies, contests, and agencies. You can read a short bio on each reader on our website, and you can pick the reader who you think is the best fit for your script. Turnaround time is usually just a few days, but rarely more than a week. The readers will evaluate your script on six key factors, concept, character, structure, marketability, tone, and overall craft, which includes formatting, spelling, and grammar. Every script will get a grade of pass, consider, or recommend, which should help you roughly understand where your script might rank if you were to submit it to a production company or agency. We can provide an analysis on features or television scripts. We also do proofreading without any analysis. 
we will also look at a treatment or outline and give you the same analysis on it. So if you're looking to vet some of your project ideas, this is a great way to do it. We will also write your logline and synopsis for you. You can add this logline and synopsis writing service to an analysis, or you can simply purchase this service as a standalone product. As a bonus, if your screenplay gets a recommend or a consider from one of our readers, you get to list the screenplay in the SYS Select database, which is a database for producers to find screenplays and a big part of our SYS Select program. Producers are in the database searching for material on a daily basis. So it's another great way to get your material in front of them. As a further bonus, if your script gets a recommend from one of our readers, your screenplay will get included in our monthly best of newsletter. Each month we send out a newsletter that highlights the best screenplays that have come through our script analysis service. This is monthly newsletter that goes out to our list of over 400 producers who are actively looking for material. So again, this is another great way to get your material out there. So if you want a professional evaluation of your screenplay at a very reasonable price, check out www.sellingyourscreenplay.com slash consultants. Again, that's sellingyourscreenplay.com slash consultants. On the next episode of the podcast, I'm going to be interviewing Benjamin Kasluk, who just directed a cool film called Banana Split, starring Hannah Marks. Benjamin was actually the cinematographer on a film called Safety Not Guaranteed, and we talked briefly about that film as well. He's got a real great story, real transparent, and really kind of describes how he broke into the business. He had kind of a low-level job in the business, started to network, um, started to shoot shorts and, and just low-budget films, and just slowly has worked his way up, and as I said, now he is directing... Um, really quite quite a um, quite a good film so keep an eye out for this episode next week anyway that's the show thank you for listening